So how come you just close your shop? I don't know, I'm a Muslim, it's my duty to pray on Friday. And it made me really think, because when it comes to money, we are all weak. And when it comes to uh, important things in life, I think we all have our family, the first important, and then almost after that, it's money. So I know that this man is living from that, and how come he prefers to pray? And that I was thinking a lot about that. There was this one day that changed my life, actually. Um, I went with a group of tourists into the bazaar area, and there was a man, it was Friday, and a man closed his shop just in front of us. And he said that he's going now to the Friday prayer. And uh, I was telling him that I have a group of people with me who wants to spend all their money because they're traveling tomorrow. And how stupid he would be now to close his shop and not to take this money and just... I know that his prices are too high and he will make a hell of money. <laughs> so how come you just close your shop now? He told me, no, I'm a Muslim. It's my duty to pray on Friday. And it made me really think. Because when it comes to money, we are all weak. And when it comes to... Uh, Important things in life, I think we all have our family, the first important, and then almost after that, it's money. So I know that this man is living from that, and how come he prefers to pray, and I called it kissing his carpet, <laughs> than taking our money. And that I was thinking a lot about that. I was just completely lost. Everything I used to believe in was changing. I was really asking basic questions about me, my life, my family, what I want in my life, uh, why I'm here. It was time to actually open the Quran and read the Quran. And I was watching for half an hour before I opened the first time the Quran. I don't know why. I, I read in the other book it's about the Prophet's life that you have to wash before you read the Quran. And I kept on washing and I had a shower <laughs> and I washed again my hands and I was really scared to touch this book because I, I felt I have to respect the other religion. I don't want to be disrespecting to them. And I just opened it and I started to read in Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah. I just finished it to the half and I converted to Islam. But I said on the same time, there are so much rules and so much Things that will change now, I'm not ready for that. And I was really scared from such a big step. What will my family say? How will I work in such place of being a Muslim? How, how do I uh, change my, my hobbies? Like, I, 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 I loved my freedom life. I, 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 I used to depend on myself since I'm 16. I moved out when I was 16 and uh, lived by myself. And there was nobody who had to tell me what to do. I, I know that I can manage by myself everything and now all of a sudden I have to admit that there's somebody much higher who knows what's right for me. So to just admit that it's a big step for my proud and um, it made me very scared and I always just thought about the hijab. What will happen if I wear hijab? Then out of the blue Elizabeth told me that she had also been a model advertising Brazilian swimsuits and spoke about how advertisers treated her as an object. I was a model when I was 15. I wasn't very professional, but you saw me in some cover shoots or in some uh, catwalk shows. I was presenting once the, the, the beachwear of Brazilian uh, beachwear. And I remember this day that they told me, oh, you got on some weight. We cannot use you for the next shooting. And I, I just felt ashamed. I felt, what's the right to speak about my body like that? I, I, I'm a personality, it's not, I'm just not a product. And I feel that even in the, in the commercials and, and, and everywhere, they, they say sex sells. And they use actually this as an instrument just to sell their product. I don't want to be used as an object. And uh, before I was even veiled, I just covered up my body because I felt the eyes of men. I felt they eat me because I used to, <laughs> I, used to I, I felt I was pretty. and. They're really eating me when I'm wearing the bikini at the beach. And I wanted to wear long sleeve. And I started to go even in the pool wearing a t-shirt because I really felt ashamed of how they look at me and just feel, wow, oh la la, like, uh, who's that girl? I don't want to be in any eyes of any man, just like, that he's saying something like that and that I'm an object to them, so. When it was time to take a next step, uh, 
I, I went one week with wearing hijab to work and uh, they told me that uh, you cannot work with hijab in this place here. So I told them that actually it's one week to go to Ramadan and I, I really want to wear hijab. And I told you three months ago that I'm a Muslim. When it comes to Ramadan, I, I'm going to wear the hijab. I didn't have any knowledge, but I knew that Ramadan is a very holy month and I wanted to wear hijab in this month. Why and however, I didn't know by then, but I just felt I have to do that. And they offered me the double of the salary if I just take it off and stay for the next season because all the kids love me and they want to come back only for me, so please stay. And they gave me an apartment, they gave me the food, they gave me everything. So when they were just firing me because of that, I was completely in the street. They told me, you have one week just to pick up your place, uh, to, to clean up your place and uh, get your stuff out of your apartment and then uh, we don't want to see you again. When I was actually cleaning up the apartment and I went back to the hotel for once, they kicked me out by the security. They kicked me out by security because I'm not allowed to go in this hotel again. I'm not working here anymore and I just wanted to visit one of my colleagues to say goodbye to him and they kicked me out by security. I had one week to find a solution for myself, uh, where to stay, what to do, how... I didn't even have money to take a ticket back to Germany and I knew I don't want to go back to Germany. And um, two weeks before that, I had an uh, incident that I met somebody who was meeting me every day after work, who answers questions about Islam and the questions I have. He was the first person who was actually just interested to help me about my Islamic interest, who doesn't say, why don't we go after work and have a coffee and then I will answer your question. No, he was the first one who said, um, any question you have, just ask me and uh, I will try to help you. And if I don't have the answer, I will call people who can have the exact answer. So this person told me that he has lots of contacts in Cairo. He can maybe help me to have, a, have work. And um, we went to Cairo and he introduced me to a family who are only girls uh, and uh, an old lady with her two daughters. And I was living with them for four months and they just gave me a home until I found a job and settled down and found my own small apartment and they were just showing me how to live as a Muslim with all these